Okay, I'm back. Cough drop in my mouth. <laughs> Alright, let's do this one first. We're going to sew in the, start here in the center about between the two inside flaps. I'm going to do about um, 5 eighths of an inch seam, half, half an inch seam, somewhere in there. Pull my pin out before I get to the corner. Stop with my needle down near the corner, about a you know about a half an inch away from the edge of the fabric, and turn. Take the next pin out. I'm pushing the edges of the pockets and flaps down so I can make sure that they get sewn down flat and nothing gets sewn down curled and puckery. Let's see, I've got some unevenness going on down here, so I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a trim so I can see what I'm doing. Don't be in a rush, take your time. This is the one with the small pocket in it, so I may have to go a little closer to the edge than I'd like. And there's a lot of layers of fabric here because we've got all of the inside pockets, we've got the outside pocket, so we're gonna go slow. the pin. Whoops, bumped the camera again. Okay, so the one thing we want to do before we do any cutting or trimming is making sure we have, you know, a decent seam. It doesn't have to be perfect. This one certainly isn't, but you don't want to have missed any parts or missed the fabric or sewn a pucker in it or anything like that. And you can see we have lots of trimming to do. Once we do the trimming, it's going to look beautiful. So let's do the next one. This one we're going to do from the outside in. that it really matters. Actually, I think I like doing it from the other side. Let's do that one. Let's do that. Pin removal. Okay. Turn the corner. Always turn the corner with your needle in the down position so you don't lose your place. and end up with a big hole in your stitching.
you want nice long dressmakers pins for working with these thick fabrics like the denim and the canvas. Um, and no, not all sewing pins are made the same. Before one of you even asked me that. <laughs> so look for a nice long pin. These are about an inch and a half long, and they're actually probably a little short. Um, it would be nicer to have one that's two inches, so, but these are, these work. But some of them are really tiny, so don't pick those. Don't be afraid either of having to do some seam ripping. Shoot, we all have to seam rip every now and then. That's just pulling out the stitches when you've sewn in the wrong place or you've sewn something crooked. There's a special little tool for that. Not bad either. Cool. All right. I didn't mean to do that. Whoops. That's where all my little press extra presser feet are kept. Now you know. And we're not going to even get into what all these are for because that will just confuse you all. There's presser feet for just about everything. Okay. I was trying to grab it this way. This is the hand I have some numbness in, so I am not surprised I missed that. Okay. All right. So now we need to trim away some of this um, stiffener and even up some of our edges a bit. So we're going to pull our fabric back and we're going to just get the scissors in here and trim some of this white stuff away. Now if you have applique scissors and you know what those are, of course use them and I do have them but I don't feel like getting them out right now. But you don't have to have them, just pull the front and back fabric back, hold it down and then run your scissors along the edge and cut that off. one. Do this all the way around before you do any other trimming because it'll be easier. Now you could do the trimming, all the trimming of the stiffener and the fabric and then you could, if you know how to do like um, zigzag on your machine, you could zigzag around the edge, you could add some trim around the edge. Like I said, you could cut little slits in the, in the fabric, extra fabric, just little slits that way to, to the stitching, not over the stitching, and then wash it and the whole thing's gonna fray like crazy, but it might be a great look will be a great look. It's the same way I do the denim aprons and I show I show the how to do that and I sh um, show some tips and tricks on how to do that in the denim apron video so you really should go watch, watch it before you try it because you if you don't do it right it could really screw it up and you're gonna probably clog up your washing machine. Alright so now we have that that's not bad but we have some sections like this so I want to trim those up.
all the way around. I really didn't cut these very square. I'm going to blame it on the full moon. I did um, use Sharpie to mark my pattern pieces out, and I don't mind if a little bit of it shows, but some of it's not attractive, so we're going to cut the unattractive bits off, and we're just kind of squaring it up. need some rivets. All right. I mean rivets. Eyelets. Holy cow. All right. Let's do this one. Then we'll get the eyelets out. Woohoo! I'm going to make some more of the plain canvas ones today. And by the time that you all see this video, all of them will be in my Etsy shop listed for sale. There will be a limited number of them. First come, first serve. I do hope you all try making them and I hope that um, you share what you make. I would like to see the fabric and things that you make out of them and how you decorate them. These denim ones would take paint very well, just like the canvas. Um, and you could, denim comes in lots of different colors if you're gonna buy new denim, sorry, above the camera again, to do this with. Um, it comes in a natural color like the canvas. It also comes in, you know, other colors too. Dark colors, light colors. So look at your fabric store and see what they have. do the same thing and we're going to even up some of our edges. I don't want them to be perfect. If I wanted it to be perfect, I wouldn't leave them raw, but I don't want it to be too sloppy. So first I'm going to do it around the outside and even everything up. I do have a pair of scissors that are specifically for cutting denim and they're made for cutting um, thick, multiple layers of thick fabric. So um, I just, I'm lazy about getting them out. So if you're going to do a lot of this, you might want to invest in a pair of them. All right. Look at that. I think that's really cute. All right. So I'm going to reset the table a little bit and I'm going to get my eyelets out and I'll be right back. Okay, so to prevent what happened last time where we had one eyelet come out crooked, we're going to line up our outer edge and then I'm going to find out where the center fold is and I'm going to mark it with a pin at each end. Maybe. There we go. And I'm going to open it up, straighten out the pin if needed. I know the pin head is where I need it to be. All right. So I'm going to, I know that point, the straight line between the two pin heads is where the center is. Move this up a little bit, so there you go. So I know along this edge of the ruler is where the center is, and that's where I need all of my marks and holes to be. So I'm going to do one inch in from the top and I'm going to mark my mark right on that straight line 
and then we're going to do slide the ruler just a little bit and do one inch from the bottom and then we're going to do halfway between those two points um, so it's about here and that's where we want our three eyelets to be so let's mark the other one before we do any eyelet setting ouch I need a pincushion <laughs> that's like that fifth time today I've poked myself with my pin, my own pins. I've got pincushions around here somewhere. I don't know. I put them away. I don't know where the away place is. It's a way away. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I know I didn't purge them. That I know for sure. Okay, so we're going to line our ruler up again. We're going to mark you may have to move your pins around. There we go. Mark an inch from the top. About an inch from the bottom. And then halfway between the two. Sounds like here. About there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we don't want it to be all wonky. At least, at least if they're in a straight line. All right. So once you have that done, um, I like to leave the pins in um, to the very top so that when I'm punching my holes with my crocodile, if I lose track of the little marks, I can at least see the pins. It just helps me keep it straight. So I just move the pins so that I can punch the hole without hitting the pin. I'm going to line it up in my crocodile, crocodile and I'm going to use the larger of the two hole punchers to punch right over the black dot and then I'm going to punch below the black dot and a little bit to the side to just to enlarge the hole. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing to the center hole. You basically want to do a cluster of like three punches. Before you take any of your mark pins out, make sure that your eyelets will fit. So I use the Dritz large. It just says large eyelets on the package. And you can get the package that has the setting tools in it. I already have them, so I didn't get that. But you can get them that way, or you can just get them like this. So I want to make sure that my eyelet's going to fit in that hole that I made. And it fits in that one good. I'll check each one of the holes. another punch. That one I don't think is big enough. I don't think it's big enough. Oops. Okay, let's try that. If you don't have a hole puncher that you can do this with, it's tough because you have to get in there with a the little pair of scissors, which is a pain in the neck. Trust me, I've done it. Okay, now that I know my eyelets fit and they're all straight and in a row, not that if they weren't straight I could do much about it because I couldn't do much about it at this point. I'd be screwed. I need to get the other half of the eyelet on here. Yep. Yep. Ah, let me get my little setting bits out. 
have a bunch of these in different sizes for different size eyelids. Okay, put the black piece on the bottom, the steel piece on the top, and hammer. You might need to give it an extra, you know, bit of hammering to get it to attach through all those thick layers of fabric. Ha! <laughs> Things are falling! Alright, look at that! So cute. See, this is what happens. I'm going to have trouble keeping it. Not keeping it. It is going to be in my Etsy shop, I swear. <laughs> Holy moly. It's going to be a problem. I can't keep keeping journals that I make. I don't have enough room. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is move our pins so that we have our pin heads for our guide, but the little end of the pin is not underneath where I need to punch with the crocodile. Because punching through the pin would not be good. All right. If you happen to have leather punches um, in different sizes, circle shaped ones, then that would work for this. I do have them actually, I just refound them the other day when I was cleaning and purging some stuff, filling mystery boxes. I did not purge them, I kept them because I love those things and I was looking for them in my metal snips the other day and I found both of them when I was cleaning, yay! There we go. We'll take our pins out. I'm pretty sure those are going to be big enough. And find some more eyelets. And then we're done. Woohoo! I should really organize this box better, but you know what? I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just, I kind of like digging in the box. I need another short one. Oh, TV turned itself on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to edit that little bit out, but what you guys aren't going to hear who are watching the video is my TV was on pause and it turned itself on. It was decided, I guess... Okay, I had to go pause and turn something off. But here we're going to finish our other denim notebook cover. fit all our eyelets in our holes. Okay. Please take all caution when working with eyelets setting that you don't whack your fingers with the hammer. I have this little small hammer that was given to me by my father-in-law who's no longer with us and I love this hammer. As I say that, I just whack myself with it. All right. There we go. How cute is that? That is so cute. So you definitely could go all the way around the edge, and you could cut slits in it up to the stitching. You could even do this part of the pocket here, and then toss the whole thing in the washer, and the whole it's going to unravel. I'm not going to do that, but you definitely could. But here they are. They're ready to go. They'll be listed in my Etsy shop shortly. And I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do with old blue jeans. Watch the other video and have some fun. And let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Put something down below. And I do will get back to them ASAP, I promise. And uh, don't forget the most important thing. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye.